we are, ladies and gentlemen, coming down here on the third time. It's the third round of Muhammad Ali Spinks fight. And here it comes us the, the one that Muhammad Ali said he was going to put him down on. And he got him left. That's right, 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 Muhammad Ali. Ali, Ali's down. Ali's not down. He has a fight. Spinks the winner. Yeah. Scott Nash is the biggest, old, ugliest booty hole ever put on this earth. The biggest, undoubtedly, the most ugliest, retarded, stupid thing, piece of slime in the world today. If you ever hear this message, you should tell me that. I think he wants to do something about it. Tell him to come on! Come on! Need somebody to love somebody. Need someone to love. Don't be wrong! Testing 1, 2, 3, okay. This is Kelly Nash on March of Irish Guard. Take 1, first time ever played by Kelly Nash. coming out and hitting the water in the toilet. Ah. Sorry for the bump. Must feel good. Oh. Last few drops. And that's it. Pat Nash and his cooking with his fingers. <laughs> so sorry, so sorry, so sorry. Hello. Now, this is Kelly Nash. I'm sitting here in here with Scott Nash. And Scott Nash just asked me if, he, if I knew where any shampoo was. The answer is no. Hello, what is your name? My name is Kelly Nash. The third month of 1977. I'm talking to you, the Craig Champ Recorder, and Scott Nash's butt is stuck in my face. Okay, now, we're stopping now to for the delay. I'm getting ready for take two, that's it. Okay. And this is Kelly Nash here, talking to you from TV Land in Brooklyn, New York. And we have the famous football player, Scott Nash, with, Scott Nash with us. And we are going to ask him some questions that people have been calling in about. Mr. Nash, are you married? That, that's a negatory on that statement there, young man. Okay, do you have a girlfriend? Well, that's a secret. Okay, in football, what do you consider the best play you have ever played? Well, that's kind of a tough one because I've had about 10,000 good ones, but really I think my best one is when we had on the 99 and a half yard line and I, and I ran from scrimmage. Quarterback handed off to me last desperate. It was fourth down. Last few minutes of the game, we were losing by three points. I ran the ball 99 and a half yards for a touchdown. It was a record. And I got medals for it, trophies. One tab to my collection of other 10,000 trophies. Okay.
Okay. Now, how old are you? Well, I'm 22. How long have you been playing uh, in professional football? Well, we'll see now. I just got out of junior high good, and the pro scout saw me how good I was and how big I was already. So right after I got out of junior high, I got into it, and I was about, well, I say 14 years old, so I've been in the pro since I was 14. That means you have not gone to college. Uh, well, I've gone to college during the season. Uh, what did you, what course did you major in? Well, I majored in the football facts. Bring that one back. Oh, I didn't understand. Well, I started a new course. It's called Sports Facts, and I'm majoring in Sports Facts, and especially the football facts. Well, that's it for a little bit. Uh, but we'll, uh, it's time for a commercial. We'll be back with you in just a minute. Okay, and here we are in the locker room of the first pro season football game. And Scott Nash has seen seemed to be perfect condition and not even sweaty, and he scored 24 touchdowns and won the game for them. It was a record of all time in one game. It was the most points ever scored in one game. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, now you can hear the showers running. In just a moment, we will talk to Mr. Scott Nash. Now we're going to see some plays from the football. Okay, uh, the football game. Okay, quarterback hands off. He runs to the... The number 36 runs to the right and goes up the middle through a big hole. And number and Scott is number 36. Runs up the middle and scores a touchdown. Every play that he got, he scored a touchdown. Okay, now we're able to talk to Mr. Scott Nash, that strange mortal that is so good in football. And here he is. How did you, what did you think about this game? Did you think it was a tough game or what? Well, I figured to be the toughest game I played all year, I made a record out of it. If, it, if this was the toughest game, just think of what an easy one would be for me. Well, Mr. Nash, if you scored 24 touchdowns, <clears throat> how come you say this is a hard game? Because most people... I mean, you say it was a neat... Yeah, you did. You said it was a hard game. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> How come you say it was a hard game? Okay, now you said that it this was a hard game. Then why... Then... And you scored 24 points. Now, that's a record. Now, explain that to me, what you meant. Well, you see, each game, I get each year, I get better and better. And since this is the... First game of the since this is since this was the first game of the season, you know. I'm sort of good. Next game I'll probably get thirty touchdowns. The next thirty five. So I'm the greatest person in pro football. Already. Well, Mr. Nash, nothing like patting yourself on the back, you big booty head. I'm not patting myself on the back, I'm just stating the facts, mister. You may be big, but just stupid. Dummy. Who you call you, you, you. Oh, stuck it. Lip, lip, lip hey, man, I don't like your... Hey, hey, come on, come on, come on. hey, hey man, get that... Get, get, get that out of here, damn. Go. Hey, don't you talk to me like that. Hey, hey, hey. 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 Where's my lawyer? Where's my lawyer? Where's my lawyer? Where's my lawyer? Where's my Hello there, folks out there in TV land. This is Scott Nash, your local reporter. And here I am in the dressing room of Kelly Nash, the famous baseball player who has broken Hank Aaron's record of most home runs. He did in one season. Just thinks what's going to happen the rest of the season. And here he is with a candid conversation with him. And here he is. Here he's coming out of the house. Here he is. Kelly Nash. What 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 does the future hold for you? Well, 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 that's really nice. Okay, now. Kelly Nash is a faggot. Baby, now, baby, now. And, uh, Kelly Nash is the biggest faggot of the year. He's been getting faggot of the year award. Well, yes, but... That's all I want to know. Thank you. Thank you. Well, this is Scott Nash ending this candid interview with this one last thought. For all you baseball players out there that really love Kelly Nash, don't follow in his footsteps.
He's a bad man. He's a criminal. He's murdered. He's raped. And he's robbed banks. It's just that he ain't been caught yet because he's slick. Though, but he can't hit Rome runs. I gotta give him that. So, hello there, folks out there on TV land. Or what's left of you. This is Scott Mouse here in Washington, D.C. to talk to the President of the United States, Kelly Nash. I'm going to talk about many of the nation's problems. Oh, here comes now, Mr. President. Russia has now invaded us. They have bombed all our cities. They have dropped atomic bombs, hydrogen bombs, and taken everyone in the U.S. prisoner. Now, how do you stand on this issue? Well, uh, I think I'm gonna look at my playboy books one last time before the Russians invade Washington, D.C., and then I'll commit suicide. <laughs> you burn them up. And that's it. That's it, what I'm gonna do before I commit suicide, that is. <laughs> no news flash. The Russians have invaded the U.S. and have taken over New York. We are talking to the president and asking what he what he proposes to do. Mr. President, what do you propose to do? Well, uh, what I plan to do at this moment is to send all of our troops up to New York City and uh, stop the Russians, you know what I mean? But what if more Russians come in from down in Florida? or come in from Alaska. You see, the only city in uh, the United States that the Russians have not yet taken over is New York City, and that's what they just invaded. And I'll send all the men up there to stop them at all costs. All five of them. All five? Well, how many Russians are there? Oh, I'd say between 10 and 15 million. And you think that our five Americans are going to stop all those Russians? Well, that's all we got. We got five men. One of them's got his left arm cut off because he got injured about five battles ago in the Battle of Seattle. <laughs> about two days ago. <laughs> They've invaded Washington, D.C., but how come they didn't get you? Well, the reason they didn't get me, see, well, can't you tell? I'm sitting down here in the lowest part of the sewer where you're interviewing me, no wonder. Oh, 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 That must be why, 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 why. No, I was just yelling, and that's what it sounds like in this sewer. <laughs> There's people up there being bombarded. I guess Scott Nash's plan will be the only thing there is left to do. This is KBYCB signing off. <laughs> For the last time. <laughs> and this is KBYCB News back to you reporting again. And the Americans have, the United States has been taken over by Russia. And here is the Russian dictator, Mr. Scott Nash. What do you have to say for yourself? Well, at this time, I will credit my victory to all my generals who have helped out. In fact, I would like to give credit of all the victory to the generals because I sat on my can and did nothing. Mr. Dictator, what was your, <laughs> what do you think, who do you think is your most humble hero? I'm a dictator. Well, I would say that the person who really helped the most towards the Russian victory would be the president of all of the United States. He made all the dumb bulls that I wept. Me and my generals wanted them to make, and that's, that made this Russian victory possible. Well, Mr. Dictator, what do you think was the most, the easiest battle that your armies have had fought in the United States. Well, that is kind of hard to say because all our battles were fairly easy. But our easiest one was when we took over, I'd say, Los Angeles. When the United States put together, can you think, can you believe this? Team Mean stopped our army of two million. 
Well, how come they tried to do that when they had when they had enough power to stop you? That's what I say because they're stupid, stupido president. And who is their president? I believe his name is uh Kelly Nash. Is that right? I am Kelly Nash, you little fog. What is... Well, thank you, Mr. Kelly Nash, for making this Russian victory possible. Quit making the girl sound a little faggot. Ah, ha, ha, ha. This is KBYCB. This is, this is KBYCB signing off for the last time. <laughs> That's it. Cut. Newsflash! Newsflash! Jimmy Carter came into Russia when he was captured and smiled. And he killed every Russian alive. The Americans have won Russia! Yay! The end. Cut. And to hear some funky Dixie land. Pretty mama gonna take me by the hand. By the hand. Take me by the hand. Pretty mama gonna dance with your daddy all night long. I like to hear some funky dicks. You're laying pretty mama gonna take me by the hand. By the hand. Take me by the hand. Pretty mama gonna dance with your daddy all night long. I like to hear some funky dicks. You're laying pretty mama gonna take me by the hand. By the hand. Take me by the hand. Pretty mama gonna dance with your daddy all night long. Some fags in the back when I'm playing wrong you. Yeah. Here comes my girl. Here comes my girl. Here comes my girl. You know. So many people have come and gone. This is changed as the years go by. And I still run as I wander on. As clear as the sun in the summer sky. Goodness. The biggest dummy the world has ever come across. Yes, the biggest. I mean, the biggest dummy I've ever seen in my life. In the background, you hear. The knocking of the people building on the house next door. For future times, this is May. May 22nd, 1981. Two months before I graduate from high school. In June of 1981. Well, at the end of June, I get out of school in June. Graduate 1st of May. May 16th or something like that, you? June 6th, I guess it's only one month away. So, somewhere around in there. Well, I must sign off for a minute. I'll be back on with you. Well, on the tape, it'll be with two seconds. Goodbye. <coughs> that all men are created equal. TV <laughs> this is Sandra Nash coming to, you from coming to you from Brooksville, Florida in the home of Sandra's bedroom <laughs> well can I tell you my problem <laughs> there's this guy named Peter Hardy and this other one named David Bain <laughs> oh no no Peter don't 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 no I saw you last night I saw Find the real truth of David and will D 
did Sandra ever find the real truth of Peter? Or is it that Peter and David are gay? This is Killer Ash again. I'm up here in my tree fort. There's a storm coming up. I'm going to try to weather it out. I don't know if mom will call me or not. Um, David Louie hadn't come around today. I mean, I could just kick his butt. But I don't feel like fighting him. <clears throat> because if I can, hit, if I hit his eye accidentally again, which I did on accident in the first place, no tell him what would happen. Um, I'm sitting up here right now. It's about two o'clock. I was gonna watch the football game, but Pope Paul or somebody's on. So I'm sitting up here. Um, I got my gun, got everything I need, all the tools and stuff. If David Louie or anybody ever gets a hold of this tape, I know who, I know who took took all my stuff. Because he's been on one round and didn't climb up here by himself. Uh, this would be the end of entry number two. Oh, one more thing. I got a good clear view of David Louie's house, of every, nearly the whole woods. So, um, We are getting attacked by the Soviet Union. Ah! Ah! Goddamn yeah, bastard! What you think you're doing down there? Let's go, back, man! Ah! Oh no, that was a bit hurt! Ah! 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 This is WWJB in the tallest tree fort in the area of Whiteway Drive and Summit Drive. Kelly Nash, this is Kelly Nash, who built it. Um, I just wanted to tell you, I'm proud to own this tree fort, um, and I don't know what to do, and here's Scott Porter, a little red nectar, knocking none down none of my boots, and that man on a freaking butt. Here we are, the Russians are attacking us. We don't know what in the world we're going to do. And they start to fight. Ow! <laughs> They're starting to fire now, and here they come. They're really killing us. They're using those big old rocks. They're putting holes in the side of the thing. We can't see them coming through yet, but they're on the outside. Um, they're hitting us good. Uh, they're especially pouncing on the door. Look, we can hold up much longer. They're really hitting the door. I don't see them around the back side. They don't have very much of a view. They keep on opening the door, we can't stop them. Throwing these big ass rocks. I don't know if we can hold, hold up to this. They were throwing them nice, I can see them though. Um, okay, here comes a scatter shot. Right. Here it comes, he's fixing it throwing. One, two, three. Here it comes. Another one. Another one. Hell, we ain't these little bitches. Get your ass out of here, you. We need to put a Scott Keep Out sign up here, you know? Okay, thanks. Okay, bye.
so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are men in a great battlefield of war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us the living rather to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be dedicated to the great task remaining before us and from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure the devotion that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain that this nation under god shall have a new birth of freedom and that government of the people by the people and for the people shall not perish from the earth 